गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी वी विल स्टार्ट आवर टुडे प्रेजेंटेशन सेशन रेज देयर हैंड हु हैज शेड्यूल्ड देयर प्रेजेंटेशन फॉर टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट विद अरब अरबाब सॉरी अरबाब यू कैन स्टार्ट योर प्रेजेंटेशन You are mute. Actually. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, you are. Good afternoon, sir. You can start your presentation. Okay. So please allow me to share my screen. It's done. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I am Arbab Zehi from Embedded Systems and IoT Intern Group of Agrada Limited. I am going to present my task one: implement electronic projects and give technical presentation. My circuit to this is logic analyzer. So, in this presentation, we are going to have a look over the first of all, that is, what is a logic analyzer and the components it comprises. And hardware specification, and also the software applications, and some of the applications also. So, first of all, we will have an overview over the logic analyzers. A logic analyzer is an electronic tool designed for engineers or any technical uh, person to debug and analyze digital circuits. So, as per the definition of the uh, Line here to debug and analyze the digital circuits. It means uh, we can check our designs, uh, de circuit designs, and many of the uh, devices designed by the uh, designers and engineers uh, through by using this logic analyzer device. And what the other key features are comes under it that it captures and displays data signals and generating reports that provide insight into the circuits behavior. It means that uh, the signals and the data flowing through a circuit or a device, it captures it and get uh, provides the data readings and the uh, required uh, required data to get whether the device is working properly or not. And the use is also simple, very uh, to use the logic analyzer. Connect the analyzer to your digital circuit and configure it by using the interfacing units and record data for the duration for some duration by running the device and time for events. And here we are moving towards the components uh, under the logic analyzer. So the one of the most important uh, component comes under the list is the hardware in the hardware components the Arduino Uno board that it is a typical logic analyzer comprised probes but the probes means the connected like our probes are like connecting wires to connect the different uh, components all together that makes the uh, an analyzer or the circuit works properly to get the desired output. And in hardware component, the Arduino Uno board is the most important the interfacing uh, component that uh, is like operating system in our computers that uh, operates all of the components all together to give the desired output as required. And in the processing unit, the unit analyzes it, uh, the unit that which analyzes and processes the data captured by the probes. These are the probes to transfer the signals and the data from one component to one other another component uh, from uh, from the input component to the output components. These are the uh, trans. You can take them as uh, transferring channel also. Here we have written probes attached to the circuit, transmitting the signal data to the processing unit. And the Arduino Uno board also consists of various pins uh, through which the probes are connected and to the various uh, other components of our device or the circuit uh, to interface uh, 
to interface to and run the device properly. It consists and also the Arduino Uno board consists of various of integrated circuits to uh, to give the required output. And in the hardware specification, we have channels. The number of signals that can be captured, the more channel, the better is the uh, the better would be the output is. And the sample rate means the number of times the circuit is sampled in a second. It's like the frequency of something that we uh, captured in a particular time period. Converter resolution. The number of bits used to digitalize the signal. The higher the resolution and the better error percentage of the digital representation. It means that uh, the higher the resolution means the, uh, the it, it gives the accuracy to our device also. And in the software specification, we would have a user interface. This uh, it could be uh, uh, taken as a software that uh, gives uh, that allow us to read the recorded data by, through the logic and that is recorded through the logic analyzer device or the circuit in a readful manner. That is, uh, we can read it in our language. And the reporting part: some software packages allow the data to be exported to other application like Excel or MATLAB and provided customizable reports. Means the uh, some of the data recorded uh, many times uh, has to be transferred to various types of application like Excel that is a uh, in rows and column manners and MATLAB also uh, and provide the customizable reports to perform various and like its purpose. Protocol decoding logic analyzer software provides the ability to decode protocols for various buses like SPI, 12C, UART, or serial decoding, etc. Here we are going to use UART serial decoding for this project. Now, uh, before uh, before discussing the application, we would have a discussion over this code so here on the work we analyzer we would uh, simulate our project here the code date is given here from here here this header file is being included to, uh, prefer, to connect the components all together, that is wire.h. And the setup function, void setup function is defined using the, uh, these parameters. And this delay parameters gives the uh, delay of 100 milliseconds, 100 units of time. That could be of milliseconds or seconds as we can take uh, tra transform them. Here, the string we are going to uh, we are going to record the data for which signal data for this in string the hello world or we can we can change the string as per our desire or we uh, or the our requirement also. The, this uh, this parameter wire dot request from zero by sixty eight comma one. This would uh, request the uh, this would request the uh, signals to get report in the, the in the uh, storage part of the device. And here, in this, the port B uh, is connected to connected to the third port of our device. And in the this loop, for loop is uh, being initialized here. So here in the diagram, we can clearly see that this is a Arduino Uno board to get uh, to interface between this uh, display and this RTC. Mm -hmm. 
these are the probes or the wires connecting to connecting the components all together the arduino board consists of various ports here up to from one from one to seven and then eight to twelve and it, it is provided with the five volt of power supply here <coughs> Now we are gonna uh, look over. Uh, we are going to simulate this project here. We would like this uh, to run over several seconds, like up to ten. When we pause it, a dot vct file will get downloaded in our system. Here, we are, you can clearly see that the hello string is being displayed on our output display. Now, uh, to read this dot .vcd file, so we will use our inter software called we are going to use this pulse view software to read this uh, dot dot vcd file from here From here, we can set up our uh, protocols as well. Here, we can clearly see that, that uh, the string H E L L O W O R L D is being uh, rated by this software where we have been set this UART uh, protocol and, uh, and also here we have set with the data format to the ASCII character format. Either we can take a uh, take also, also take the format as decimal or hexadecimal or octagon or binary also, uh, that, uh, but we are taking as ASCII characters and we are we can easily read these characters hello space void and here this also the so this is uh, this is displaying us between the microsecond in the micro uh, with a microsecond of scales so that is how a VCD file can be displayed that is reported through logic analyzer. Now we would have a look over the applications. So for the first of the application, it's very simple to design and verify design verification, ensuring that the digital system operates as per the design specification for what it is being designed and as per the documentation. Uh, it works properly or not. The logic analyzer also helps to ensure that all components work as per the requirements or not. And it becomes easier before deploying the device or the circuit to the market or the uh, or the to the people users uh, to uh, improve in a circuit or device. <laughs> Bug hunting, debugging digital circuit, tracing path of issues and verifying the fixes are all made more manageable with the logic analyzer. When it is simpler, like we are having a, 
proper uh, check before going to our exams. Uh, they are having a proper revision to before writing our exams. So this logic analyzer provides a better overview of our uh, verifications in our design or our newly de designed devices, reverse engineering. It is most inter interesting part of the logic analyzer. The logic analyzers help extract functional and operational data from the digital system to be used for further development, analysis and history. And is, uh, it means that uh, it can be used in the reverse engineering as a, by using the devices that are uh, already working or already in the market or and being used by the users uh, that can be are can be uh, improved by using reverse engineering by implementing this logic analyzers and in the conclusions we can uh, take uh, some advantages as non destructive testing it provides us a non destructive testing uh, and catches glitches and transitions faults and so uh, efficiently also and highly customizable and scalable allows for thorough analysis of digital circuits. And some of the, uh, obviously, uh, everything has some disadvantages also. Uh, sometimes it is expensive for a beginner that has uh, budget uh, issues and requires hardware and software familiarity. A person having uh, lesser knowledge in hardware and software uh, but we can face a little of the problems to dis to work with this these types of projects. Cannot trace analog signals. Um, it is obvious that it, it is a digital circuit verifying uh, device, so it is sometimes uh, difficult to work with, to uh, compete with the analog signals for this logic analyzer. And tedious data extraction often required. So sometimes it got harder to deal with this and log to deal with this device. That's all what about, about my presentation, sir. Are you done? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I want to ask question. Uh, where can these devices be used? Hello, can you repeat, sir? Where these devices can be used? Uh, sir, uh, these devices like uh, uh, we can use in a, our uh, as we use this uh, some of the uh, recording tapes also we are using. Uh, uh, this can be used to test that type of devices also that uh, the recording type tapes. Um, that could be uh, a little of older devices now, but it could be uh, work properly for the devices. And uh, many of pro uh, projects like that, uh, as we report, uh, we record uh, audio in our mobile sets now, and if this could uh, be uh, a good application for this. Okay. Um... Everything was fine. Just try to add a, a little story to your presentation for a better understanding. Add a QA a slides and thank you slides to your presentation. Okay. Oh, sir, I have added thank you one also. Okay. But uh, add uh, separate them. Actually. Okay. Yeah. There should be a different QA a slide and different thank you slide. Okay. And okay. add your contact info in thank you slide so that if, every, if anybody have any issue, they can contact you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. I will yeah. uh, remember that for next time. Yes, sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, you can stop sharing your screen. And next, we have Harsh. Harsh, you can start your presentation. Yeah, and I. Yes, you are audible. Harsh, you... actually, your voice is fluctuating. Am I audible? You are audible, but uh, your image is stuck and uh, your voice is fluctuating. 
looks like you are having a network issue. No, Harsh, you are not audible actually. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, now, now, yeah you are audible now. now? Yeah, you okay, are audible. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I want to ask another same history. Okay. Is my screen visible? Yeah, yeah. Can you see yeah. the presentation? Yeah, you can start. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good evening, everyone. So this is my fifth presentation. And my task for this presentation is to plot the data set of NTFC band. So yeah, let's get going with the introduction part. So again, I'm going to minimize me. So the objective is to, pl uh, to plot the trend lines on SDFC bank stock data. And uh, the importance is to visualize trends in financial data. And I've used the tools like Python, Pandas, Matplot, uh, sorry, Matplotlib, and Sky Kit uh, Learn. So let me give a data set overview. The data set I've used is uh, SDFC Bank Stock Data, and it's in CSV format. The columns are date and close, representing the date and closing prices and the significance of closing prices in analyzing a stock trends. So actually, this is a linear regression model. Uh, the linear regression is used to plot a graph uh, given some data points. So yeah, I will be uh, talking about this in detail in my later part of the presentation. So yeah, plotting the trend line, actually closing prices and predicted trend line are plotted sep uh, separately. Extensive use of matplotlib for creating the visualization and there are customizations options as well. So figure size and layout styles and colors, access labels and titles, as well as grid lines. So result and interpretation part. The result of the project is a plot that shows the actual closing prices of SDFC bank stock over a period of time, along with a trend line estimated using linear regression. The interpretation x-axis of the plot represents time with the earliest date on the left and the latest date on the right. The y-axis represents the closing price of the SDFC bank stock. The blue line represents the actual closing prices on each date. The red dashed line represents the estimated trade line. Actual closing prices shown by the blue line is recording on and data point while the dashed red line is the one predicted by our model. The terms that are used here is closing prices, trend line, as well as the linear regression. So yeah, uh, I will go with the code part now. So are you able to see the code? Need to see the code? Yeah, it's visible. Yeah. So first of all, uh, we import pandas library. 
Uh, secondly, we import matplotlib. And uh, the third library that I've used is uh, sklearn. So first of all, we are reading the CSV file. The CSV file is present in this, uh, in this folder itself. And uh, this is the date column I was talking about in the presentation. And this X and Y are the X axis and Y axis uh, respectively. Actually, this is X coordinate and Y coordinate. And this X and Y coordinates uh, join in to form the graph. So I'll run the graph. Okay, first of all, I think I should open the CSV file. So this is the CSV file, the data set that I'm using to plot the graph. And once again, let me run it for you. So do you see the graph? Do you see the graph? I'll share the screen once again. I don't think you will be able to see the graph. Nevertheless, no, no. Can you see the graph? Yes. Okay. So this is the graph, and this is the uh, dashed red line that I was talking about, and this is the blue line that I was talking about in the presentation. So yeah, the code is quite simple. And next, for my for any questions and answers, you can. Uh, me on my email that is adithrash1212 at the red gmail.com and the references that i've used for this presentation is the uh, is pandas documentation matplotlib documentation exquisite uh, learn documentation financial data and with python and the linear regression so yeah thank you that was all about my presentation are you done us uh, if we use uh, this plotting, ones. yeah, uh, I want to know uh, what do you think? What will be the accuracy rate of this plotting? Uh, actually, predicting accuracy is a little tough uh, when you use linear regression because uh, linear regression is not a very efficient method to plot graph. There are multiple methods as well, but as for li linear regression, you can uh, estimate it up to sixty to seventy percent. Okay, everything was. Fine, but add a story. Thank you. So oh, yeah, better I, I, actually it was a very short presentation. So uh, for the engagement, I yeah, I know I, I have gone through that, actually, but typical presentation. Yeah. Okay. So but okay. Uh, just uh, find something or research on something so that you can add it with. Okay. 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 Yeah. For okay. I'll take care for of me, it. but it will help you improve uh, better communication with the clients. Okay. And your presentation yeah. was uh, scheduled for 12th uh, September, I think, right? Uh, yeah, but, but I was traveling on 12th, so I couldn't uh, deliver the presentation on that day. Okay. So I delivered okay. it on 14th. Why didn't you join you yesterday? Yesterday, the network, there was a network issue here. So today as well, so uh, you could have seen that. Yeah. The I first part of the meeting. So yeah. Just try yeah. to be on time, okay? And don't okay, get too yeah, late. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We'll Everything else was fine. Okay, thank you. you can stop sharing your screen. Okay. Can I leave the meeting? Yeah, you can. Okay. If you have any general questions, you can ask. No, no, no. It's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So as we don't have any more presenters and nobody has general questions, this concludes our today's presentation session. Thank you.